Now I just want to go back down and think about the things that we did one more time. We labeled the runtime of simple lines. We marked loop blocks and where it was easy, we labeled the number of iterations. We gave a name to the runtime of complex called functions. So we called that function descend from and we gave a name to its runtime and that made it easier to reason about the runtime. We broke the function into chunks for analysis. And you know, one other thing I didn't say here, but it's been a theme for us, is when we were in doubt, when we were confused, we tried small examples. And in this case, what that meant was small bounds on loops. Remember making that table for the first loop? And then we made a table for the second loop as well. Uh, and small arguments to recursive calls. And that's like the table we made right up here on the page right now. These techniques are pretty handy. I mean, is that going to be all? No, there's more than that. I and mean, we can put some dot 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 in here. We represented things represented loops as summations and solved them and so on and so forth. We knew some clever things about like the log of i factorial being theta bounded by i log i. Uh, you know, it's not going to be possible to list all of those things, but really these these first ones are probably the most important ones.